12 minute benchy. Wow. The Chidi X Mark III is a budget 3D printer, which on paper has fantastic specs. In this video, I'll be putting it through its paces to see if it can live up to the hype. The great thing about these Core XY 3D printers is that they come almost fully assembled and ready to go. In fact, the Chidi Quick Start Guide actually tells you that the first thing you should do is plug it in. As soon as you power up, you see why. There's a very handy walkthrough of the whole setup that gets you nearly ready to print. Unfortunately, it does stop short of telling you that you need to run through the automatic bed leveling process, which if it had been included, would have given this printer top marks for setup. 3D printers are getting easier and easier to set up and this Chidi machine is no exception. You only need to cut a couple of cable ties, remove a little bit of cardboard and some supporting fixings, and it goes straight into running an input shaper tune. What this means is that in theory, you don't have to mess about with any machine tuning. You can just jump straight into printing within about 10 minutes of opening the box. I say in theory because I did tweak the settings very slightly, but we'll get to that shortly. I should just say that I didn't buy this machine. Chidi sent it to me for a review, but as with all my reviews, they have absolutely no influence on the content of the video. What you get here is my 100% honest review of what I have found over weeks of testing, warts and all. If by the end of this video you decide you want to buy one of these for yourself, then check out the link and discount code in the description below, which is only available for a limited amount of time. As I said, bed leveling wasn't included in the setup wizard, and I only knew that it needed doing because I've owned and set up 3D printers before. And that's a little bit of a theme with the XMart 3. It's a good printer, don't get me wrong, but some of the information you need to have a great experience with a 3D printer is missing. There's no manual. There is a quick start guide, but as far as I can see, it covers the same information as the setup wizard. And at no point does it tell you to set a Z offset or create a bed mesh, which is something you do need to do before you start printing. There is a USB stick supplied. So I thought, aha, the manual will be on the USB stick. But instead there was just a PDF version of the same quick start guide. I always like to review these machines through the eyes of a beginner, which I have to admit is getting harder and harder as I own and use more 3D printers. However, with this machine, it's quite clear to see that there just isn't quite enough information for a complete beginner. The good news is this is something that could be easily remedied by the creation and upload of a manual to the website or even some blog posts. They even have a YouTube channel, but so far there's no guides for this machine. Hopefully Chidi will be watching and might look to remedy some of the minor issues I'm about to highlight here. So once you've found the automatic bed leveling option, setting a Z height and creating a mesh is all very straightforward. There is a piece of plastic supplied, which you're told to use to set your Z offset, but I damaged mine a little later when I tried to set a Z offset with the nozzle heart. My preferred method is to use a feeler gauge. So that's what I went with from then. Once you're done with creating a bed mesh, it's time to load filament. There's a spool holder and a filament runout sensor on the back of the machine, which keeps everything looking very neat, but it does mean that you have to spin the machine round every time you want to change filament. This wasn't really a big problem for me as I was using the printer on an open bench, but if you're pushed for space and want the machine back to the wall, this may not be ideal. The good news is that you don't have to use this spool holder. You can use a separate one and use a piece of PTFE tube to guide the filament into the filament runout sensor. This way you can remove the standard spool holder and push the machine right back to the wall. As with any 3D printer, to load filament, you need to get the nozzle hot enough to melt that filament. And there is a very simple process that works very well with this machine. It does heat the nozzle up to 230 degrees every time, which is a little bit excessive for PLA, but it didn't cause me any problems. There is a button that cuts the filament on the side of the hot end, which can help with removing the filament without a lump of gooey half melted material on the end of it. But as the head homes in the left front corner, you can't actually get to the button without pushing the print head out to the middle where there's more room. This feels like a feature that hasn't been fully implemented yet and removing the filament without cutting the end off is not really an issue anyway. Unlike many 3D printers, the Chidi X Mark III doesn't come with any pre-sliced models on the USB stick for you to print. What is included on the USB stick, however, is slicing software for Linux, iOS, and Windows. Chidi Slicer is a modified version of Cura and I found it very easy to set up and use with the default profiles that are included, but this is mainly because I'm very familiar with Cura. Once you set up a Wi-Fi connection on your XMart 3, you can even send slice files directly from your slicing software to the printer and even start the print if you want to. This is a great feature and comes courtesy of Clipper firmware, which the Chidi X Mark III utilizes. If you don't know what Clipper is, it's open source firmware that controls your 3D printer. 
For a long time, the most popular firmware on 3D printers was Marlin, which was designed to work on 8 and 32-bit mainboards and work fine. Clipper, however, runs on more powerful control boards and combined with an optimized mechanical setup can allow you to print much faster. How much faster? Well, on something like the popular Ender 3 machines, this test model, known as a Benchy, would take around an hour and a half to print if you want a high quality finish. The exact same thing on this clipper controlled printer would print in only half an hour. And if you're happy to sacrifice a bit of quality, this machine is capable of printing a Benchy in only 12 minutes. And that right there is the biggest selling point of this 3D printer. It runs clipper firmware and has a mechanical setup to back it up. The Chidi XMART 3 is a Core XY printer. That means that the nozzle moves forward and back and side to side. As each layer of filament is laid down, the bed moves down to make room for the next layer. There are some great benefits from this setup, which I won't go into in this video, but if you do want to see why Clipper and Corex Y 3D printers are a match made in heaven, then check out this video, which is also down in the description. What I also explain in this video is that the Chidi XMART 3 is one of the first in a new generation of 3D printers. This new wave was given a massive push when Bamboo Lab released their new models last year. These are also Core XY machines and run firmware that isn't Clipper, but is capable of the same speeds and quality. Chidi have recently released three new models of different sizes and specs, and the XMART 3 is the least expensive in the range. At the time of making this video, the Chidi XMART 3 is $600, but with the discount, it's down to only $450. What you get is a hell of a lot of printing capability for that money. The full specification is easy to find from the links below, but the highlights for me are the 20,000 mm per second acceleration, the 30 mm cubed per second volumetric flow rate, the double-sided PEI bed, and the ceramic hot end heater. The ceramic hot end heater, as well as a fast heating bed, means that starting a new print never takes longer than about two minutes. The PEI coated bed gives great first layer adhesion and it's very easy to remove and clean away from the printer. The acceleration and flow rate figures are what allow super fast printing. One feature that Chidi have implemented on this printer that I'm not entirely convinced about is the use of carbon fiber rods for the X axis. The theory is that the weight saving allows faster print head movements, but carbon fiber is not a wear resistant material. Only time will tell how long it will take for signs of wear to show, but when it does happen, replacing them is gonna be a headache. Chidi warned that it's important to keep these carbon rods clean and that replacement is not possible. I'm sure that once people start experiencing wear, then a solution will be found, but who knows when that solution is going to be needed. It could be years, but it could also be months. So what about actual printing? Firstly, I have to say that testing this 3D printer over the last few weeks has been really good fun. I do have other clipper controlled 3D printers, but nothing that moves at the speeds of this Chidi XMART 3. Chidi recommend using PLA for this printer, but for me, that's selling it short. The XMART 3 is enclosed, and whilst it doesn't have a bespoke enclosure heater, it does get pretty warm, and the hot end can reach 300 degrees. I easily achieved temperatures of over 40 degrees inside the enclosure without any additional heating, which meant that printing with filaments like ABS became much easier. I went through an entire roll of ABS printing some prototype parts for a customer whilst I was testing this machine, and other than the odd application of a little bit of 3D lac, bed adhesion and warping was no problem. I also printed nylon pretty easily, which I've never been able to do without an enclosure on my other machines. I also decided it was time to start playing with some ASA filament, which I haven't used before, and whilst I haven't done a huge amount just yet, my first impressions are very positive. As this machine recommends printing with PLA, I also printed some of my favourite models with filament supplied by 123 3D. This Flexi Dragon, printed in their Chameleon Red Silver, looks great and printed in only seven hours. The fact that the XMART 3 was now my fastest 3D printer, it became my go-to for anything I needed to print in a hurry. I'd also been sent some silver PLA by 123 3D, so I used it to print out some more functional items that I needed. If you want to find out more about the range of filament that 123 3D can offer, then check out the link in the description below. Whilst the setup process of the XMART 3 does tune input shaper or resonance compensation, I felt that I wanted to go a little bit further with improving the quality on the surface of prints, particularly on the corners. What I wanted to do was tune pressure advance and having other clipper control machines, I knew it should be possible. Unfortunately, searching through the menus didn't yield any results. The usual way of doing things with Clipper is to connect to your machine using an IP address over a local network so that you can then access more features using a web browser. 
As the slicer software was already connecting to the IP address, I thought it would be simply a case of typing the IP address into a browser, but that didn't get me anywhere. I figured I just needed the correct port ID, and after a lot of searching, I finally found what I needed from Lost in Tech, who was one of the few people to already have a review out for this machine. The port that the Chidi X Smart 3 uses is 10088. As soon as I had this, I was finally able to access Clipper's fluid interface and actually unlock a whole host of other great features that just aren't available when only using the printer's screen. I don't know why Chidi don't tell you the port ID in the manual. Oh, oh wait. So now I had access to the web UI, it was very easy to just input a few commands, run a test print, and then adjust my pressure advance figure to smooth out those corners. The other thing I then tried was plugging in a webcam to the USB port. It works on other Clipper machines, why shouldn't it work here? Sure enough, after enabling it in the settings, up popped an image. Again, this is another great feature, why aren't Chidi shouting about it? I could now sit in my office, slice a model, send it to my new 3D printer, start it printing, and watch it running at super fast speeds, all without lifting my bum off the chair. If you don't want to take up the only external USB port, then there's even a spare USB port on the control board that you can plug your camera into instead, leaving the external port free. The more I learned about this printer, the more I liked it, but I think that most owners won't have any idea of the potential of this little workhorse. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though. Personally, I'm not a fan of inductive bed probes, and that's exactly what the X Mark III uses. They never seem accurate enough to me, and it seems that Chidi also had some reservations about solely relying on an inductive sensor to set his Z height, the distance the nozzle needs to be from the bed. Instead, they seem to use a combination of an optical sensor at the bottom to zero the Z height, and then the inductive sensor to take a bed mesh. The only reason I can see for using both of these sensors is for increased accuracy, so perhaps they share my distrust of these bed probes. Either way, the bed mesh seems pretty good once set. There has been some concern over the potential of the beds warping when the enclosure gets hot on these chidi machines, so I decided to check it out for myself. Using the Fluid web interface, it's very easy to see a visualization of your bed mesh. So I took one mesh when everything was cold and then heated everything up for around half an hour, which gave me an increase of 20 degrees, and then I took another mesh. The hot mesh did show a slight variation in the print surface, mainly that the center was a little bit higher, but this is not something that I find particularly surprising for a fixed bed. You could always take a new bed mesh when everything's up to temperature right before you print with a simple change to your start g-code or a macro. Another thing that I found after many hours of printing is that some of the linear bearings mounted in the bottom of the bed had actually dropped. I've no idea when this happened and I can't say that I noticed a drop in quality at any point, but after pushing them back in there was a noticeable improvement to the rigidity of the bed. They haven't dropped out again since and if they do I would probably look for a better way to hold them in place. The build volume is smaller than some of its rivals, but if you want a bigger build volume, the X Mark III has bigger brothers in the X Plus III and the X Max III. These do come with higher price tags too, and for many, the X Mark III's dimensions will be enough. The bed dimensions are 180 by 180, with a maximum print height of 170 millimeters. To give you an idea of how big that actually is, I printed this box as big as the X Mark would allow. So as with all my reviews, here are some pros and cons of my experience of testing this printer. On the positive side, this machine is lightning fast. Compared to anything with Marlin firmware, it's going to seem like it's in fast forward all of the time. The included slicing software is easy to use and comes with great profiles that you can print with straight away. The ability to fully enclose the print area means it's much easier to print with more temperamental filaments without warping, and then for filaments like PLA that don't like the heat, you can just simply remove the top cover to let all of the hot air out. It's also quick and easy to set up. There's zero assembly for you to do, and removing the packaging takes minutes. As the X Smart 3 runs open source Clipper software, it's very easy to add a camera, connect and control everything from anywhere else on the same network, and add and tune more advanced features in the future, even if Chidi don't tell you all of this. And therein lies the first of my cons. There's a distinct lack of information with this printer. From forgetting to tell you to create a bed mesh, all the way through to not giving you the port ID for a remote connection, Chidi are massively underselling the potential of this machine in my opinion. 
I believe this could be a great investment for somebody new to 3D printing, but there's just not enough guidance for them to get the best out of it. When it comes to the physical setup and build of this machine, the core XY frame and mechanisms are good. There's very little wobble in the frame, even with the fastest print head movements, and there's no need for you to do any of the adjustments that are needed with bed slingers. I do worry how long it's going to be before those carbon rods wear out though, and the linear bearings dropping out the bottom of the bed could be a sign that a little more thought needs putting into keeping the bed stable. There are some other little niggles for me, like not being able to set the Z height without then also creating a new bed mesh. You can manually change the Z offset while a print is running, but it would be nice to set or at least check it before a print starts sometimes. This could be a simple firmware tweak though, so keep an eye on the Chidi website for any firmware updates. I've already done one update which fixed a few minor bugs, so there is hope for more features to be improved. So there we have it. Testing the Chidi XMART 3 has been a great experience, if a little frustrating at times. For anyone who's owned a 3D printer before, you're going to love the speed and added potential it provides. For anyone completely new to 3D printing, there could be some frustrations from lack of information. If only there were a detailed manual or some online guides, I would wholeheartedly be recommending this printer as one of the best for beginners that I own. Don't forget to check out the links and discount in the description if you decide to buy one of these for yourself. Click here to see another one of my videos, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see me review more of this next generation 3D printers as I get hold of them. Thanks for watching.